A very popular post hoc explanation method is Lime. It is very important to understand how it works and what it does and does not do in order to have confidence in the explanations that it generates. Frankly, the last thing we want is a black box explaining another black box. LIME stands for Local Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanation. In this slide, let us visually walk through the explanation process of LIME. Since LIME is a model agnostic post hoc method, it assumes no access to the underlying model. LIME treats the model as a black box. This means it makes no assumptions on how the model is working, but it extracts the logic of the model by observing the outputs of the black box in response to a large number of inputs. All the information that the line explainer gleans from the black box is established by querying the model and observing outputs. In this case, we have an input X that we want to explain. Lime generates new input samples around it and then observes the output of the model in response to these artificially created sampled inputs. Then Lime constructs a linear model that is locally faithful to how the model behaves in the sampled neighborhood. The key idea of what Lime is trying to do is this. The classification decision boundary can be globally complex and squiggly, but in the local region, it is simple and linear. In this specific example, we're trying to explain the decision distinguishing a red cross from a blue dot. The decision boundary is represented by blue and red regions. Lime is tasked with explaining the decision for a specific instance, the dark red cross in this case. Lime randomly samples around the instance, and the closer the samples are to the instance, the more important they are. The importance is represented by the size of the uh, cross or dot. You see the dots and crosses that are closer are uh, to the instance we're trying to explain are larger than the crosses or dots that are further away. The outcome of the explanation ends up being a linear model that communicates feature importance for that instance. Here's a conceptual example of using Lyme to explain an individual prediction for whether or not the patient has the flu. A machine learning model takes in a list of symptoms and patient attributes. Categorical features include, is the patient sneezing? Is the patient experiencing fatigue or headache? And continuous features include the weight, of uh, age of the patient, uh, the Lyme explainer identifies the features supporting the flu prediction for this patient, including the presence of sneeze and headache. While the absence of fatigue symptoms contradicts the prediction of flu, however, the influence of the supporting features is greater, and hence the prediction is this patient has the flu. Here is Lyme in action for an image classifier, Wolf versus Husky. Rather than examining the features of wolf or husky in terms of sharp teeth or body shape, the decision is based on the presence or absence of snow. The polar bear with snow in the background is almost guaranteed to be classified as a husky. Uh, although this classifier is highly accurate, it is right for the wrong reasons, and the explanation helped us detect that this is a biased classification model that we should not trust. Here's an example of using Lyme to classify if a text post is discussing atheism versus Christianity. You can see that the explainer assigned a probability of this text belonging to each class, 58% uh, probability that this text is discussing atheism, and 42% probability that this text is discussing Christianity. The explainer plots important features that the classifier used in making its prediction. It also shows an extract of text surrounding the important features used by the classifier. Uh, this example shows that the classifier was not training to words that were related to the main concepts being examined, rather it was training to noise. So text with EDU or NTTP has been used to identify that this text was discussing atheism. This is clearly a biased classifier that is overfitting to noise, which also means it would not generalize well to new examples. This diagram illustrates Lyme's output explaining an instance from a tabular dataset for a classifier predicting if a mushroom is edible or poisonous. The leftmost graph provides prediction probabilities for each class. Uh, edible is predicted with 0% probability. Poisonous is predicted with 100% probability. The middle graph provides feature importance visualization. The most important feature is on top, followed by the second most important feature, and so forth. 
The color code represents whether or not the feature supports the prediction. In this case, orange features support the prediction of poisonous, and blue features support the prediction of edible. The rightmost graph provides feature values for the explained instance that are color-coded as well based on the prediction class they support. When evaluating the usage of line, it is important to understand the pros and cons of the method. We will start with the pros. The first thing that Lime has going for it is that it is widely cited in the literature. At the time of this recording on Google Scholar, there were over 4,000 citations in the span of four years. As a matter of fact, it is hard to find a recent paper on explainable AI or machine learning interpretability that does not include a reference to Lime. We can infer from the number of citations that Lime is well understood by the research community. It is also relatively easy to understand for practitioners as it is well documented. Finally, it is relatively easy to implement. We talked about the pros. Let us discuss the cons or limitations of Lime. The first limitation we should note is that Lime assumes local linearity. Recall that Lime approximates the model locally with linear models, so it is not designed to explain models that are not linearly local. The second characteristic about Lime that we should note is that it's computationally expensive. Lime establishes a linear model by sampling around the instance. A peek into the Lime GitHub repo shows that the default number of samples is 5,000. This means that it may not be computationally feasible to generate full explanations for the entire dataset. Consequently, this means when validating line explanations, we are primarily generating small number of individual predictions. Therefore, we run the risk of line behaving differently in different regions of the decision boundary. Because the explanations that line generate are resulting from a random sampling process, if you invoke Lime to explain the same instance by the same classifier more than once, you could end up with different explanations. This phenomena is known as instability and is one of the Lime characteristics frequently cited in the literature as a drawback of using Lime. This image is an example sourced from a paper that implemented a modification of Lime to provide consistent explanations. In this example, we can see the effect of running Lime twice and getting different explanations. The diagram consists of the top 10 features that Lime identified as important for this prediction. The features highlighted between the two diagrams represent features that are different between explanations. And in this case, six of the 10 top features are different. The length of the bar associated with each feature indicates the degree of influence that the feature has. It is interesting to note that the top three features remained the same and the instability was mostly centered around the bottom seven. The last item on the cons list is that Lime has been shown to be vulnerable to adversarial attacks. In this paper by Dylan Slack and his co-authors, they illustrated a technique for intentionally training a biased classifier that spaced its decision on racial attributes in a way that was not detected by Lime. The implications here is that Lime can help identify the presence of bias in some cases, but may not be able to detect all biases. And a model can be intentionally designed to be biased without being identified as such by Lime. We reviewed the pros and cons of using Lime, and there are some key takeaways. We should note that Lime is a great tool that made important contributions to the field of explainable AI. Its popularity in academic research means that it's relatively well understood compared to other methods. By all means, we do encourage you to use it, but it's important to be informed when using it so that you understand the limitations of the tool and properly evaluate its explanations so that we don't end up with a black box explaining another black box.